Γεια σα, το κοιτάζω πότε σήμερα βρίσκεται στο Κούκου και καλεσμένο μα σήμερα είναι ο Doug Aldridge, ο οποίο είναι καλεσμένο του Καγμάκη Music Stores και θα μα μιλήσει για την καριέρα του. Mr. Aldridge, thank you for the time for this interview. Welcome to Greece. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. I guess it's, uh, it's not the first time you've been here in Greece. No, but it's always, a, it's always an honor, it's a luxury. I know that um, you guys, you know, you live here so you don't think much about it, but for us guys, we live in California and to come to, to Greece or Athens, in Greece or anywhere in Greece is a real luxury and it's excellent to be here. Okay. Is there any special sentimental reason that uh, you keep coming back to Greece? Uh, do you like There's the fun base here? Is it something special about this this place? Well, I mean, in Greece, uh, people are very passionate about their music and they, they really support the band so much. I mean, the times that we've played here with Whitesnake is just insane. So it's, yeah, the fans are amazing. The food is amazing. The girls are amazing. Everything. Um, Is amazing. Did you have the opportunity to meet Greek uh, musicians and uh, jam with them uh, in one of your visits? Yeah, yeah, there's great musicians here. Uh, um, you know, like I say, people are, I mean, for an example, I, I, um, I think that maybe, you know, the, the, the heart, the passion is a little deeper than, than other parts of the world sometimes, you know, um, in this part of the world. Okay. So it's, it's, it's great, but I mean, the main thing is, is that, um, It's just a beautiful country. People are so, everybody is so kind and we uh, and helpful. For for you know, when you come here with Steamroller, we don't we don't know what we're gonna get when we show up to a place, and we're obviously um, we're well taken care of when we're in when in Greece okay. and and other countries too. But we love it. Okay, so talk about about the the Steamroller project. Tell us well, it's it's actually we don't know what it is. It's a kind of an undefined kind of thing. It just happens like that um, Michael and uh, Michael Devin and Brian and I, Brian Tishy and I were working with Whitesnake um, and uh, we decided we wanted to, maybe sometimes we'd want to go jam at a club or we might want to, maybe if we had a couple days off we might want to do a little gig or something. So we started thinking about it and then uh, Marshall Amplification asked us to play at, at the Music Messe in, in Germany. And that was our first gig about, I guess, what, two, or two years, three years ago, something like that. And then we started doing some gigs. And um, Who came up with the name? I think Michael did. I'm not sure. Brian. Actually, no, Brian did. Brian did. But, but Michael takes credit for it, as he normally does with all Brian's great ideas. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what, what's the deal with this band? What, what, what are you aiming for? Well, we, is, is it pure fun, or do you want to create okay. some music? And we, yeah, no, we, we would definitely create some music. I think the, the key is, is that um, Michael and Brian play, have played together for years, and, it, and it's awesome. And uh, Michael's voice is um, really, really cool. And it's, this is the first opportunity for him to um, sing lead. So with Steamroller, he's singing lead. Um, it's, it's three piece. So there's like, a real, there's like a real chemistry that happens. Is it challenging to play in a three piece band? It is. It's, it's, it's really it's beautiful because you can, you can basically read each other. The more you play together, you can read where the other person's going. And, Somebody might go off and do something, and then the other two follow. And when you start adding more people, obviously you have to rehearse. With Steamroller, we, we basically never rehearse. We just do sound check, and we kind of figure it out. And we have a, a rough outline of where it's going to go. And then during the gig, we will either keep it there or we'll take it somewhere else. It just depends on the feel. It's, is it a, a different level of challenge? Is it more difficult? or more inspiring to do this three piece it's, than being in a full whole band with Well, they're both great. I mean, being in a band like, like White Snake or Dio or something is, is an honor. It's great, and you're playing killer songs. But in this situation, there are no time rules or constraints, and, and we can do whatever we want. It's very, it's very refreshing, and it is a challenge because, um, you know, you, you go down these, you, you know, the band will start to go down this, this wormhole, And it's like, whoa, where are we going? You know, we're playing. It's like the audience. audience all over again. <laughs> yeah, and, and then, then we kind of get back somehow, you know. It's just like a challenge to get back. But the bottom line is it's about the music and, and everybody, that, you know, all three guys, are, we're all good at what we do and, and we just love it. We have a lot of fun. So when did you first start playing the guitar? When I was 11. And what, what, what inspired you to pick up the instrument? I, I don't know. I, I guess I was hearing some stuff on the... And, but really... Um, what really started it was uh, that summer when I was in, um, 
uh, when I was 11 that summer, some friends went away, and I was by myself, didn't have anything to do. There was no sports going on for me at that time. And so I picked up, my sister had a classical guitar, and I picked it up and started learning that. And, uh, and I liked it. It was really fun. You know, we didn't have any games, video games, or any of that kind of stuff at that time. So um, that was really a fun thing to challenge yourself to try and learn. And then I got an electric guitar and um, learning, you know, starting with a bar chord, you know, it's really exciting. Wow, that's okay. That's how you do it, you know. Just started jamming with friends and. And here you, we are. you first started playing the guitar and then started to listen to the music or the other way around? No, I loved music from when I was a little kid, but I, I was more hearing pop radio stuff like, you know, like the Carpenters or the Beach Boys or something. I didn't really know about, about heavy rock or, I didn't, I mean, I heard the Beatles, but I didn't really know what they, how great they were. But um, Hendrix was out and different stuff. So I would, when did you start appreciating Hendrix and stuff like that? Well, the first heavy band I really heard was Black Sabbath. I heard um, Iron Man. It was their big single, I guess, and, and I heard it and it was like, wow, that's cool, you know? And then, little by little, I got, I found bands like Zeppelin and guitar players like Jeff Beck and Peter Frampton, so. And then you started uh, developing, uh, copying their styles and uh, I was learning to play. Well, I was trying to, but I didn't know how they did those things, you know. I no just, YouTube then. I basically would just, I was playing rhythm guitar all through high school, you know. I'd play a little lead. It wasn't until I mo was moved out of California, I went to, I mean, moved out of Pennsylvania, I went to California, I started to play lead in a band. And, um, and it was really fun. And, and I actually got an audition with Kiss. So I was like, um, I thought, wow, if, I, if I'm good enough to get an audition with Kiss, this is when Ace Freely was leaving. I thought, if I'm good enough to do that, I should really keep practicing. And it really inspired me to take it serious. So your first uh, big opportunity was uh, the, the Kiss gig that you well, got? Well, the, the, it was just an audition. An audition. I, 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 went, I met the guys and we played a couple times and they, it turns out I was just too young, you know. But, um, um, but really, um, it, it was a perfect thing for me because I needed to get serious. I was just a kid, and was that a point that you decided that you're gonna do this for a living, or it, I never it just did. happened? I never did. I don't want to do it for a living. I want to do it for fun. It just happens that it's the best way I can make a living. But I, I really don't want to make a living playing music. Yeah, but I mean, the, there must be a point in in your life that you thought that I, I've got to to make me sense somehow. Yeah, I started teaching um, because I had I had heard about Randy Rhodes was a teacher, and I wanted to be like Randy Rhodes, and I. Had a, I was playing clubs, and a couple kids said, you know, hey, we want to, we, can we take lessons? And then I got a job in a music store, and this was a time when everybody wanted to be like Eddie and Randy and Ingve mm -hmm. and Richie Blackmore, you know, and Jimmy Page. Everybody wanted to be those guys, so there was, I had seven days a week full lessons all the time, and that's when I really started getting good. Then Being a teacher. I started playing really good, and then after I, you know, now I, I, I'm a little bit, uh, I wish I had the time to practice that much because it's like, you know, you, you get really good when you're playing all day. So that was, that was, uh, that was the time when I got, you know, started getting serious about it. What was your first major gig that you think that was your first major gig and put you on the, on the spotlight? And you got a name from yourself. I don't know. I mean, it, it's probably working with Jeep with Dio was was really. I mean, I was always doing things. I was in bands. I had a band called Lion and different things. But when I got to work with Ronnie, that's when I started to get my name out worldwide. And that was the first opportunity to come to, to play in Athens. Actually, hmm. we played um, in the summer of two oh two in Athens at an outdoor place. Really cool. Mm -hmm. Uh, did you ever think about uh, recording some stuff that was uh, instrumental? Uh, because you you went through this whole instrumental guitar instrumental era in the 80s and uh, early 90s that everybody was uh, making some uh, guitar instrumental music. It was very popular back yeah. in the days. I did a few records like that. It was just um, Japanese release, so it was it was. Um, Small, you know, distribution, and now it's that, that stuff's come out in Europe a little bit. But um, yeah, I did, I did some. Okay, but but you never seemed so so keen on uh, communicating those records. Uh, now that you got a big name and a, a big career, 
Maybe I will. I mean, I, I, I'm just, uh, I've been busy with Whitesnake for the past 10 or 11 years, and I haven't had a chance to really think about anything else. How was that experience with Whitesnake? It was awesome. It was great. I mean, I got to go around the world, and I got to, you know, work with musicians like Michael and Brian and David, obviously, is one of the greatest singers. So it was great. And, I mean, the opportunity to meet fans around the world and have support from around the world is a, it's a very big luxury. Um, but it was just, now I've got some free time, a little bit of free time to to figure out what I want to do. And, and doing right now, doing Steamroller is really fun. It's, it's a grueling, you know. I mean, you, we, we get beat up on these Steamroller tours because they're very, like, this is our fifth show in a row. And we fly every day and have to go sleep for a couple hours and then come to the gig, you know, and get ready to go. It's pretty grueling, but it's very satisfying. Okay. And to you know, for all of us to be able to play and Michael to sing the way he does and have the freedom, it's, it makes it worthwhile. So right now, I'm really digging the free time to to have that. Okay. So let's talk about gear. What 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 gear do you use? The guitar is the same, I think, for how many years? Well, you use I, the same I, I love I love all guitars. I just happened when I was a kid to have a, my first good guitar was a gold top. I I had a a, a copy guitar first of a Les Paul because I really loved Jimmy Page. Obviously, he was the cool. He looked so cool with the Les Paul, and and his sound was great. He's iconic, yeah. And I had an opportunity to buy a Les Paul, and I it happened to be a gold top. I didn't even know what a gold top was. I thought actually. A sunburst was called a gold top because it kind of had that gold spot. But when I opened the case, I was like, "Whoa, what is that?" He goes, "That's called it's a gold top." And I was like, "Oh, I had never seen one before, and I thought it was kind of ugly. But now I think it's the most beautiful Les Paul. I've worked with Fender for a while and Jackson for a long time, different people. But I've played Les Pauls always through my life. Let's talk about this particular Les Paul." Seems like it's uh, it's uh, seen a lot of the road. Yeah. Somehow. Yep. It's pl I've done every every White Snake gig I've done with this, and that's hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of gigs, uh, and um, most Dio gigs with this guitar too. Um, but what what do you use for backup guitar? Well, I have a I have a bunch of different Les Pauls that are good for like I have this Cream a '78 Cream Les Paul that's really great for Is This Love because it's just got it's got that tone for that solo. But well, uh, White Snake was touring with um, Gary Moore and Y&T yeah. one year, and Dave Manichetti, who became a friend of mine, he said, your gold top is my favorite one, it sounds the best. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know what, I love that guitar. I actually was at that time playing a Black Custom, and I wanted to retire that kind of, in, because I didn't want it, because John Sykes always played a Black Custom, so I didn't want to play a Black Custom. So I decided I'm going to go back to my old gold top sound. You know, that's what I started with. Okay. And when Dave Manichetti said that's the best sounding one, I was like, cool. So any particular specs in this one that the it's I refretted it with um, with these are actually nickel uh, nickel frets, so they're a little softer. Now I actually started using stainless steel frets. I really love. They're super hard and they they don't dent at all. And I had. Um, different nuts on it but right now it's got a brass nut and it's working out really well I got tone wise or in intonation wise um, in, in sustain tone certain things about the tone I mean mostly with open strings but um, maybe some people think it has a tone thing but uh, it's got Grover tuners which is different it's got my signature sir pickups that are pretty hot but they're not compressed they're, they're sir Aldrich pickups are called And then, um, I how does Gibson feel about <laughs> using so They're man. cool. Okay. They're cool. Actually, I'm working with Gibson now, and um, yeah, they, they're, they're, it's actually a copy of a Burst Pucker 3. This, I, I got a, I bought a Gary Rossington Les Paul, and it had a Burst Pucker 3, and I said, I want something like that, but I want to make it my own. So John and I did four prototypes, and we picked this, and then we made a match for the neck. And then I, I put um, Bumblebee cap capacitors in, And I found some vintage knobs on eBay that are from the 70s, and I put, put these on. And Tone Pro's Bridges, that's it. Okay. So, but this is just, a, it's, a, it's kind of a heavy one, but it, I'm just used to it. I'm used to the way it sounds, and it's... And the way it feels? Yeah, it's a great, it's a great feel. It's kind of a cross between a 60s and a 50s neck. 
You have you use high action or low action? This is it's gotten lower because of the temperature change, but I normally like it a little bit a little bit higher because you don't get any buzzing. Which right now it's not bad, but no. Yeah, it's okay. It's it play. You can bend up. There's no fret out or anything. But um, I generally like it a little bit higher so it doesn't get any buzz. Okay. But I, I need, this is um, something I'm talking to I'm talking to Gibson about. Or maybe we're gonna do something. We'll see. I'm wise. Do you have a, a preferred amp that you use? I love, I mean, I love, Marshall's the go-to amp. I've had Marshall since I was a kid, but I, of course, I love Fenders and Vox. I, I don't own any Vox, but I love them. I own a, um, some Fenders and a trainer amp and some um, boutique amps uh, from different people that have been But really when nice. you play live, you go to Live is Marshall. always Marshall. It's, I mean, the go-to amp right now would, would be maybe, I mean, the, the JCM 2000 is a great, just all around amp. It's got great clean and dirty. Okay, and uh, pedal wise? Pedal wise, I, I have a signature pedal with Magic Box that is really cool, and um, I, I'm using a uh, DVK, <coughs> excuse me, DVK Fuzz that's that's awesome, and Dunlop, um, always Dunlop Wah. And the one I like is the um, the Dunlop uh, CAE 404, I think it's called. It's the custom audio Wah. It's to me, the best wah they ever made. You can change it from vintage to modern. Um, the tone. Yeah. And it's got a boost the if wheels. you want it. The the, yeah, you can you can adjust that stuff inside, but it's just out of the box. It sounds amazing. What do you send in the battle between the vintage and the modern gear, the digital gear and the analog gear? What, what do you think? What I mean, there's no, there's, no, there's no question. Analog gear just has a sound, and that's the sound that we grew up on, on records, is all that analog stuff, and, and people doing you know their own thing with it I, I have a lot of vintage amps and they are they sound amazing they're all individual but for going on the road sometimes they break down a little bit you know so it's and now the technology of companies like um, with what Marshall's doing now in, in, in with uh, the, the JMD1 is such a killer amp uh, JVM obviously is a vintage tube amp but it's got all these channels when I started off, you had to use pedals, you know, with one channel. That's how you got the tone. But then there's stuff like Fractal and um, the Kemper and all this stuff, and it's all good. But there's, I mean, sound-wise, a vintage amp is, is the most pure, I think. Have you tried uh, playing with, uh, with your eyes closed to a Kempner or a Fractal, and uh, can you notice the difference? It's, Have you challenged I yourself it's, doing that? Um, I did actually, and I can I can notice a little difference, and I can notice a feel difference too. But um, they're coming really close, and there are certain situations where it it makes sense, you know, to, to, to use it. I mean, as an example, I'm friends with with the guys at Fractal. They, a lot of bands that use Fractal are saving million dollars a year by not shipping a huge backline all around the world. They're, they're sending their frac fractal, you know? So there's, a good, there's, there's good stuff about it all, but I mean, I've been a Marshall guy from, for years and years, and, and uh, that's... And at the end of the point. day, you cannot teach an old dog a new trick sometimes. Yeah, yeah. You don't have to anyways. <laughs> yeah. So what's your immediate plans for now? With Steamroller. Uh, we'll, we, we've got about another, this is our Friday night, we've done five in a row, we're going to take a day off tomorrow, hopefully we get to hang out in Athens a little bit. And then uh, we've got a, we're working on a, um, we're working on a little, a little live, de a little live CD that's really cool. It's called Exercising the Demons Live at the Devil Studio, Volume 1. That means there's going to be more volume. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but it's really, it's just live, just one take, everybody playing and singing, and um, it's got a good vibe. It's like... The way we approach everything, you know, we, we play stuff from everything from Michael Jackson to to um, to Hendrix to um, Police, or whatever, you know, whatever. We were doing Beastie Boys for a while, and but we do it in our own way, which is kind of like a mix of Cream meets Hendrix Experience meets something new, you know. And um, uh, so we're gonna carry out this tour. Um, obviously, Brian's got he's got a, a few gigs that he's doing, I've got some gigs I'm doing, Michael's in Whitesnake still, uh, Michael's got, they're, they're getting ready to, to drop a new record next year and they'll be touring, 
uh, I started doing a gig in Vegas called Raiding the Rock Vault that's just a killer. It's a great super group of different players. And um, uh, so I've been really enjoying that. And that allows me to be home with my son. That's kind of the motivation between that, um, which is why I was had to step away from Whitesnake for, you know, uh, I was, I really wanted to be with my boy. And then I had this opportunity to work in one spot in Vegas and play with some killer musicians too. Um, you know, Jay Shellen from Hurricane, my buddy from Hurricane, and Howard Lease, and, and uh, Hugh McDonald from Bon Jovi. And it's just a killer band. And all these great singers, Robin McCauley and Paul Shortino, Andrew Freeman, all these guys. Um, and uh, so we are doing that in Vegas. Michael's doing White Snake, Brian's doing Dead Daisies, and a lot of sessions he does. He's got a band with Sass Jordan called Sun that is, um, it's really smoking old school rock and roll, and Sass is, she's just a, she's just a badass, you know? Yeah. Got it. I don't know if you're familiar with her, but she's yeah. got a killer sound, and she's a great person. So we're all busy doing different things, and it's, it's all good. Life is good. Oh, I want to also say, I've got a band called Burning Rain that we want to come to Greece to play. We've got three records out, and it's, 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 it's very similar to what Brian's got with Sun, and Michael's actually working on solo material too. But Burning Rain, check it out on, um, on YouTube or on, on iTunes or something. It's, it's really cool. It's very, it's kind of got a white snake flavor, you know? So I think people will dig it. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks, brother. Thank you. Για περισσότερε συνεντεύξει, παρουσιάσει μου στο εξοπλισμό και μαθήματα κιθάρα online, κοιτάτε το κοιτάσπορτ.